Hi. So we're ready to work on prompt three of the assessment commentary, which is analyzing the academic language use in your learning segment. Let's get started. The first part is from prompt three. We have the question of when responding to the prompt below, use concrete examples from the video clips and or student work samples as evidence. Evidence from clips may focus on one or more students. So this is something that you have to plan from the get-go. You have to be planning on what kind of language task you're going to have the students working on and how you're going to capture that. It might be within the video clips that you've submitted for your instruction task two, or it could be an additional video file that you'll name language use. And this video file can be no more than five minutes in length, and then you'll submit it um, in assessment task part three, uh, B. Uh, and then uh, you could use also your student work samples uh, that you analyzed in task three. The beauty of this is, is that you could have evidence of academic language use that you've used in one, two, or all of these sources. 3A. Ex ex explain and provide concrete examples for the extent to which your students were able to use or struggled to use the selected language function, vocabulary symbols, and, and discourse or syntax. Let's organize our writing. Now, explain the student's use of language function. What were they able to do and provide evidence? So, in, in other words, say, as you can see by looking at my work sample on student A, or um, as you can see in the video clip, um, that uh, language use video clip, or as you can see in uh, my clip two from the instruction commentary, uh, provide evidence of what they struggled with in the language function. So, did they have trouble with comparing and contrasting if that's your function? Um, were they, what were they able to do? What did they struggle with? Tell me about the students of varied language needs. Uh, how did they do with the language function? And how did this help with your content understanding? So how did um, what they were doing, how is it helpful in what you were teaching their content understanding? Your second paragraph is going to focus on students' use of vocabulary. And you're going to provide evidence of what they were able to do, provide evidence of what they are still struggle, struggling with, talk about your students with varied language needs and content understanding. Here is my big advice about the syntax or discourse. Focus on one or the other. Please do not try to provide evidence of both it's too much and it's not necessary and it does not help you score more. So what were they able to do with the syntax or discourse? What are they still struggling with? How about your students of varied language needs? In order to get a five, you have to talk about students with varied language needs. If you can't, then you forfeit a five. It's not a big deal, but it, it if you're trying to get a five, you know, you, um, you need to do that. Let's take a look at this sample, the student who did very well. On day one, lesson one, students were using language function identify when listening aloud, identifying the character. Then she talks about in clip one at 508, provided in task two, I call on student number 16 in the blue jacket say which character and blah, 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 blah. Then she describes the activity. Um, she writes about her ESL and her struggling readers. She talks about this helped with content understanding because the central focus for this learning segment was blah, 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 blah. Very good. Then she goes into her next paragraph. The students were using vocabulary text evidence 
as they were turning and talking and clipped one at 402, providing in task two. So uh, she tells the score where to look, what we're looking for, vocabulary. Um, she's saying evidence of students using their text evidence and shows it's 532 and clip one. Um, she quotes um, and then she goes on. So this is all very good. And then she finishes up with talking about discourse. They're using discourse as they are writing the name of each character they are identifying on their whiteboards. She talks about students in clip one from task two, what they are doing. She talks about the struggling students again. Um, and then she talks again about helping students with varied language needs. So she actually made a five on this. Good job. So let's take a look at the rubric that's associated with um, academic language use is rubric 14, analyzing students' language use. And this is a, one taken from the history, social studies learning. Uh, however, all of them are very, very similar, and uh, there's not even a, a much difference between um, uh, secondary and um, elementary. There is some difference uh, here with uh, early childhood. Early childhood is not, does not have quite the uh, requirement for academic language, and in the SPED handbooks, they talk about uh, communication rather than academic language. So if you're in those areas, um, this is a little off base for you. So um, we want to look here at level four. We can see that in order to get a four, you need to provide evidence of students' use of function, vocabulary, and discourse or syntax in a way that develops content understanding. So you do have to talk about how that academic language was helping the students um, move forward in their content understandings. In order to get a five, then you have to um, get a four and then also talk about uh, not only the function, vocabulary, syntax, discourse, and the content understandings, but this is where it's important to talk about those language needs that specific students have. Now, language needs can be a little bit more specific than thinking about just your um, normal, uh, your, I'm not going to say normal, but your uh, more uh, general learning needs that we talked about in task one. Uh, because with language needs, you need to think specifically about reading, writing, speaking, uh, listening. So, Reading, writing, speaking, listening, those are the four things uh, where we think of, and, and then of course with, um, there's also for those of you who are performing arts, um, there's a performance uh, that's considered um, as part of the academic language. So these are the uh, language needs that you need to be talking about. That brings us to the end of uh, this section. And I hope that you will uh, join me in my uh, final uh, video for task three, how to write task three. Um, and so I will see you online.